for example, in one of the chapters, we saw that in Rwanda, there is no enough computer infrastructure at schools. They don't have computers, JS software, but they didn't stop. To learn how to think spatially, they produced some handouts and ready to use materials with transparencies. Without computers, without digital data, they still use GIS and promote GIS throughout the country at secondary schools and it's very important. And in other countries we learned from the book that there are many different challenges in front of using GIS in schools and lack of computers, lack of knowledge about GIS, about how to use GIS in education, they are still the most important challenges in front of using JS in schools. But on the other hand, we see many opportunities. For example, com computer technology, computer, we see that in many countries, infrastructure is improving very well. Classrooms are equipped with computers, internet, and then whiteboard, intelligent whiteboards, and it will be very easy to implement GIS based applications to use GIS in learning different subjects in classrooms. And the other benefit of the book is that we learn from each other. After reading all the chapters, I understood that we needed to develop a web based system in Turkey. Here we have been doing different things to make JS a common tool in schools. For example, in 2008, we have published a book, JS for Teachers. It includes digital data, software, and ready-to-use materials for teachers and students. And then, in 2009, we implemented a project, conducted a project. We produced different samples, project samples, in public high schools. After that, we organized JS courses for teachers. But now, we understood that providing teachers with data, with technology, is not enough. That's why we need to do other things. Then, when we looked at the book, we saw that web-based JS is a common application in many different countries. And in the future, we will try to produce a web-based JS system for schools and teachers in Turkey. I think one of the interesting things I learned uh, from editing the book is how GIS and geospatial technologies seem to thrive regardless of the context of education in the country. Uh, and that was one of the reasons we wanted the first section to deal with the context, was to sort of lay out the fact that obviously different countries uh, have different uh, educational systems. There are some systems like Taiwan. Uh, where there is a national curriculum, where geography has a central place in the national curriculum, and where GIS has a central place in the national curriculum. And the Ministry of Education in Taiwan has uh, supported GIS through a variety of initiatives, teacher training, curriculum development, uh, software, data. Uh, there are other countries where that infrastructure doesn't exist, um, but as, as Ali said earlier, uh, Rwanda is an example where maybe the infrastructure doesn't exist, but they are finding ways to use spatial technologies and get students thinking spatially uh, in a way that, that we would hope would exist everywhere. One of the uh, advantages in it to using GIS in addition to helping students understand the geography content or the earth science content that uh, you might be trying to teach is that there are also jobs available in the geospatial industry.